Welcome back to another episode of Peak Pursuits. Today, we are diving into the world of data-driven change management with a leading expert in the field, Luke Komiski. Luke is the founder and CEO of DataDrive, a renowned data consultancy empowering mid-sized organizations worldwide with actionable insights and transformative strategies. With over seven years of experience and a global team of skilled data professionals, Luke has helped over 150 organizations spanning diverse sectors such as media agencies, public school systems, and manufacturers unlock the power of their data for strategic decision making. In this episode, we'll explore the intersection of data analytics, AI technologies, and change management delving into key questions such as how do data analytics and AI contribute to change management? What real-world examples demonstrate successful data-driven change initiatives? What role does data play in identifying areas of improvement within organizations? And much more. Join us as we unravel the complexities and possibilities of data-driven change management with Luke Comiskey, providing valuable insights and strategies for organizational transformation. Welcome to our Peak Pursuit series, where we pursue innovative strategies for the business world. Presenting your host, Sandhya Lakhan Paul, who talks about AI, change management, learning and development, digital marketing, project management, leadership development, and much more to set you up for success. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us for the latest tips and tricks from the world of business. Welcome, Luke, to my episode this morning. Thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to talk about Data Drive and how you've come to, to where you are in your journey right now. So let's start with the very first question. What is Data Drive and how did you come to be the founder of Data Drive? Thank you so much for having me. So uh, Data Drive provides managed analytics services for small, mid-sized companies. What that means is uh, organizations are often trying to build out data reporting capabilities, but there is often a lot of uh, a risk and overhead and just a long journey of not only bringing in the right technologies to put all of the data-driven decisions in place, but also bringing in the niche skill sets that are needed to make sure that a data program can be successful in implementation, but then on an ongoing support type basis, because so much of what is involved with data analytics is around making sure that people actually adopt this technology and want to use it in their day-to-day decision-making. Awesome. So can you, can you tell me some of the solutions that you offer at Data Drive? Yeah, our main offering, uh, as I mentioned, was around managed analytics services. And so really what that looks like is an end-to-end data program in a box. Uh, okay. lot, organizations have a lot of different applications where their people are conducting the work, processing the transactions. Every day, there's more and more data points being created and people and processes in place to make sure that data is actually being put in these applications. The challenge for a lot of business leaders is being able to take all of those data points and have a full cohesive picture about how the business is performing across the board. And so what our organization does is actually uh, taps into these applications, whether it's underlying databases, APIs, a lot of creative ways we can get at the data, but then put that into a central data warehouse where things can be stored, organized, modeled to uh, better set it up for analytical purposes. And then ultimately, we deliver the part of the platform that many people interact with are around the data products, the interactive dashboards that they can use to understand what is happening in the business so that they can make more informed and hopefully faster decisions along the way. Okay. So if I were to put it in layman's terms, you're you're kind of making the data side of things easier so that people can use that data as a jumping off point to tell a cohesive story, essentially, right? Yep. Yep. We want to we want to help people move beyond. I think a lot of people turn to Excel spreadsheets and trying to figure out what's actually going on in the business. And we want people to get out of the manual work of putting into spreadsheets, getting rid of the risk that's involved with copying, pasting, pasting data on a weekly manual. basis. Yeah. And ultimately give them back time so that they can make the decision and go forth and do what they do best uh, in their organization. Right. Right. So, OK, so 
So I'm curious, can you share some insights about the current landscapes, uh, landscape of data analytics and AI technology? AI is very hot right now, and I'm really curious about how it intersects with data analytics. Yeah, the fun part about having a career in data analytics is that it feels like every three, four years, we just go continue to go through different hype cycles and different uh, technologies and innovations that can take place. I think over the last decade of, of my career, a lot of it has been around this concept of self-service analytics. So people being able to dig into their data without necessarily having to write any code. We've talked about big data was a thing where like we can throw all sorts of uh, various data formats into one central spot and being able to play around with it. And then I would say the big hype cycle we find ourselves in now, I mean, across every industry is around artificial intelligence and some of the applications that we can use for it. There's a ton of applications about, you know, where I, AI can play a role, but specifically within the data space, I think what people are excited about is, is there a way that we can get to a point of essentially being able to Google our data and get informed insights without necessarily having to go out and build a very pointed data product or a dashboard to answer that, but more use natural language, have it be able to scan the whole breadth of all the data that has been collected, and then be able to provide a simple answer back. And that comes with its own risk, right? That's a very black box type magical machine that spits out answers that building trust in that, I think is gonna be that next big challenge that everyone needs to think about across every application for artificial intelligence. Yes, and and then I think the the risk that we are all talking about from the AI perspective is that what is the inherent bias that the AI brings, right? So when you talk about black box, uh, essentially, you know, whatever it's spitting out, it's also projecting some of the biases that are fitted that are are embedded in that AI platform. So that's another one. I think we have a lot lot of uh, growth in that area to in the and that trust factor that you're talking about. Um, I think you already mentioned some of the common short shortcomings, right, that you've observed. Um, any other short shortcomings from the end user perspective where data analytics is concerned? Yeah, I think the big thing when we think about AI applications and data in general is that uh, you, you mentioned it well, like AI can confidently lie to you if you don't have just good foundational data processes in place behind the scenes. And so what I talk to a lot of organizational leaders about is you can't skip past all of this foundational data work that needs to be put in place and just magically buy an AI tool that's just going to spit out all of the right answers. Right. And then to that end, I mean, a challenge we've had in the data industry forever, but I think AI is even just going to accelerate that even more is how do you create trust in the data insights that are being delivered, whether it's an AI spitting out an answer or a dashboard providing some kind of insight so much of what we have to focus in the data industry is, yeah, we can do all, do all these tech, technological things to bring the data to the forefront, but simple things like calculation logic, uh, even metric definitions to be able to help people feel comfortable using data continues to be a challenge in our industry. It's why we throw a lot of technology out, but there is uh, definitely still an adoption issue when it comes to organizations just even feeling comfortable, a, a frontline worker being comfortable accessing insights and being able to trust that it's telling the right information so that they don't they don't feel misled when they make a decision based off faulty data. Right, right. Okay, so I'm gonna switch a little bit. Um, I talk a lot about change management and I'm really curious about how do you see data analytics and AI technologies contributing to the change management field? Yeah, there's like, there's two things that I think about where, you know, AI can start to play a role and all of it is grounded in, in data behind the scenes is, one of it is around just per predictive trends, being able to see where, change may be happening or taking place well before it becomes a more uh, visible problem. And even with like predictive trends, it's it's also with AI, you've got the ability to do a lot of simulations and different outcomes of, uh, I like to kind of explain AI as just a like pivot table on steroids, because I think people mm -hmm. understand what pivot tables are. I mean, right. AI fundamentally has the ability to uh, look through data and scan all the different ways that you might manually create a pivot table and try to look for interesting insights, it can scan through it and find potential things a hundred million times faster than any human would. And so being able to get ahead of any kind of potential uh, change event or seeing a change in a system before it becomes a big event, I think is a really good use case for, for uh, what AI applications could bring. And then 
The second one that I also think about is, and there, there's a ton of use cases, but I think right. AI can also uh, provide more of a personalized learning journey for people. So understanding that everyone has different styles and ways of, of learning and understanding new concepts and uh, AI at a more personal level will be able to understand like who's maybe grasping certain concepts and then what are different ways that we could guide them through different training paths. And right. even for a change management management professional to think about what are the multiple paths that I can maybe use AI to create the multiple paths for my learners to be able to uh, take in that new change that needs to happen. Right, right. Okay, so you mentioned use cases. I'm wondering if you have been exposed to any of the use cases, either from a learning and development perspective, you already mentioned a few, um, or even change management. And you can, can you dive a little bit deeper into, into that? Yeah, I have so many cool examples because I think uh, for me as a data professional, uh, for me to feel like I've made an impact on an organization, there has to be some fundamental change in how people and process operate. Yeah. I think a really cool cool example was I had previously worked with a manufacturing retailer that you can think of them uh, creating a bunch of wedding invites, uh, uh, invitation cards, notebooks, just a lot of the print type, print on demand type shops that you'd see online but it was the manufacturer of that behind the scenes. We had used data uh, because I think a big problem that they were having was people were signing up for different priority shipments of, I want next day shipping or a week shipping. And the prioritization of that on the factory floor was largely left up to people to identify like, what is the right way that we can get this order done in time? Okay. What we found through data was that anyone that was picking this, like that awkward middle ground of either not next day shipping or not seven day shipping, but all of these like two to five day shippings, those were ones that were consistently going out late because it wasn't on the extreme end from a, a, a priority perspective. I see. So being able to tap into those uh, machines and understand how fast they were printing out stuff, looking at the order data to understand uh, what was happening and the reason why people felt like they were getting late shipments, we were able to identify through that, that it was more of a prioritization effort on the front end about when is the right time to start creating these orders so we can get them out on time. And that's a really great use case of using data to first identify the problem, but the data alone is not going to create that change, but being able to take that data, put it into a cohesive story that during a 30 minute presentation, you can present what the data is telling us can help drive different human behaviors so that the factory workers, the people who have to make the prioritization efforts in that moment can better understand the impact of some of their decisions that they're making downstream. And without that data, they would have never been able to really like clearly see that story and make right. that change. Right, and, 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 and I already see the connection between now that you've identified the pain point of, of how those deliveries sit between the two and five day shipping, how we can, you know, if there are, there's a production problem, there's a supply chain problem, or otherwise you can then train your employees and put change initiatives in place, um, you know, to, to solve that problem essentially, because you've now gone to the core of what is causing it. And you, there are multiple ways of uh, solving that. Uh, so tell me, uh, what are some of the common barriers in integrating data-driven approaches in companies today? I think the biggest one uh, that I continue to run into is just the, it's honestly just the general change management that and adoption that needs to go around data efforts. I think the technology that we have today has made it easier than ever to be able to connect to your, connect and even build your own insights. I think the biggest challenge that you know we continue to have as a data industry and even just with AI adoption is around the type of rigor that needs to be put in place of like, we build a really cool dashboard, a really cool data product, but so much of like what we kind of label as the last mile of analytics continues to be missing. And it's around a lot of the, the training, all of the little like definitions that need to exist on a dashboard so that a user could feel comfortable changing their behavior of what they do have done on a daily basis for who knows how long to go look at a new product so there's, there's the friction of like having to go find something new. And then also the friction of like, if I don't intuitively understand what this is trying to tell me, let alone how to use the product, how am I going to be able to uh, make a decision and, and incorporate that into my day-to-day -day process? I think for as long as I've been in the data industry, that, that it continues to be the challenge is people's trust in the underlying insights and then their trust in themselves to be able to change behaviors to access data products. 
that whole change management piece, I think is largely underserved in a, a lot of like deployments that I've seen. Uh, and so much care and attention needs to be put into that from a, from a training side. I, I, I um, completely agree with you. One of the things that we run into from a change management perspective is a lot, and even a training and development perspective, is a lot of dependence on surface level data. What I call is, is just the frivolous end of data, right? So I'll give you an example. Um, for example, we, we measure the success of a learning and development initiative by butts and seats, what we call the number of people who attended our training. And that's essentially not from a change management learning development perspective, that is not a effective way to measure or, or an effective data to measure the effectiveness of, of our learning and development or change, right? The effective way of doing is uh, of doing this would be what is the behavior change as a result of the training that was offered or the change that was put in place. So in that case, I'm thinking, more of user adoption rather than how many people came to my class. So, so from your perspective, what are you doing to encourage people to dive deeper than that surface level data and then use that deeper analytics to then inform their initiatives? Yeah. That, I mean, that's such a cool example you provided because it, it, I, you know, I, I talk about it like the vanity metrics. I don't know if you use that word, but that, that's like what I call it. And, and you go into a lot of organizations, whether it's around change management initiatives or even just understanding how the business is performing, the easy ones to go after are things like revenue or, uh, you know, Fails. even just like profit. But those right. are all, those are all downstream outcomes of things that you aren't actually measuring, like the change that happened within the process. Right. And, and so uh, I think an important part that I like try to distinguish is that there's kind of the difference between like vanity metrics where you can, you know, use data and analytics to fill your executive scorecard to understand what the pulse of the business, but those are, those are more like downstream things that have already happened. And then the other conversation I have is what are, what are more like action oriented metrics? And so like in your, your example, it's the, uh, the adoption or maybe login percentage to a new new system like they're actually taking what the knowledge we delivered and did something with that that's a lot more effective and so what i work with a lot of organizational leaders on is like how do we create those actual metrics those those things that we need to see increase or maintain on more of a weekly basis so that we can understand how effective this initiative is doing over time without having to wait until like next month to see if revenue increased by that time, it's a little bit too late to like that's that's too downstream to understand if like the the activities we've done, training, communications have actually moved the needle in terms of changing actual people's behavior or, or uh, adjusting a process. Right, right. So, have you heard of the concept of human centered data? Yeah, I have. <laughs> and how? So, I'm curious. How does that differ from the traditional approaches to data? Yeah, I love that you brought that up. So human human centered data is actually a funny enough like a trademark term of ours. Yes. And uh for me what it represents is really around that last mile of analytics that so much of trying to make data and analytics impactful and especially like around this time when we're seeing more than ever a ton of tech layoffs, it's about proving the return on investment in analytics initiatives. And I think for years, for a variety of reasons, including low interest rates, like we've been able to invest a lot in analytics technologies and do some really cool things in that realm. But I think fundamentally what a lot of organizations have been missing has been what is data providing to me that's providing some kind of positive impact on top line or bottom line for me. And for me, human-centered data, the way we we approach any kind of data problem is to start with the user personas of who is trying to uh, make a decision, what does their day look like? What kind of questions are they looking to tackle if they were to look at this hypothetical data product? Starting with all of those more front end pieces and not getting bogged down in the details of what data is available, how easy is it to access? I think all of those technical details can be figured out throughout a project. But I think if you start with the users in mind around building these personas, you can build towards a data product and understand how they want to flow through flow through any kind of data product, understand where can we put those analytics that's going to meet them where they're at, 
that is really what we largely mean about human centered data is just building with the human in mind and not with the data in mind. It's, it's more right. of a priority of thought process. Right. And I'm, th- I'm, I'm inferring from your conversation that the traditional approaches were not centered around the human aspect, which was the biggest shortcoming in that case. Yeah, I think what I see a lot of in organizations is they end up with a ton of dashboards that I'll call like dashboard sprawl. That feels like I've got a thousand different ways to slice data. I don't have trust in the insights. I don't even know where to look. And that becomes a whole adoption issue in itself is your own end users have no idea how to use all these cool things that you're investing in and putting out there. And it's more about quality than it is about quantity. But I think a lot lot of companies have fallen into this, let's just make another dashboard for it and not recognizing that 80% 80% of those have never been looked at after that first month of adopt or first month of release of that product. Right, right. Okay, so that brings me to my final question. What do you foresee as the future trend or challenges in data analytics and AI adoption? I think the near term issue that in probably over the next few years is going to be around the we are definitely on this hype cycle of AI. I don't know if we've reached the peak of the hype or maybe we're just still a little bit more hype is still needed, but I think we are about to fall into this natural thing of uh, tempered expectations of what AI can provide for people. I think about a lot of the challenges that we are going to see is that uh, it is really hard to pin down what AI use cases are even worthwhile going after, what AI tools are even worth using. I think everyone is just kind of using their own little internet research to figure out what tools are, you know, going to going to be helpful for me about incorporating AI or data-driven analytics into my decision making. But it feels to me like very much still the wild west and and so I think what the things I look about is how do we provide clarity for people? How do we uh set tempered expectations around what use cases are actually going to be achieved by AI? I think it is AI in itself is going to be a very foundational piece, much like when the internet came out or the calculator was invented. I think we're at that that point, but we're also going to be learning together about when and when can it make sense and maybe what are the use cases where it should never make sense. Yeah. Um, We're going to be learning learning that together, but that that is like the big thing as we get over this hype cycle and into uh, tempered expectations. Yeah. And and you mentioned wild rest, right? So, so I, I, you know, an offshoot of that uh, is that the education that needs to happen and how to use data analytics and AI uh, or even combine the forces of the two. So I'm, I'm curious, I know I said last question, but I'm curious, um, is, is Data Drive doing any in educational initiatives or are you involved in any research work where uh, we are going to have standards around how to use data analytics and industry standards around uh, data analytics and AI adoption? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're involved with a lot of, uh, because of our model around managed analytics services, we have a lot of uh, long-term partnerships that allow us to go deeper with cus- with our customers to understand, uh, we understand where their data is sitting and more of uh, potential use cases that could go after. Uh, mm-hmm. Having that foundational data in place opens up opportunities for companies to uh, be able to like essentially feed that data into some kind of AI model to provide really meaningful insights. I think the the things that we're involved with is helping understand around just the whole issues around security, privacy, uh, what is the right data to actually feed into that system? And then what are what are decisions that we can safely make with the use of AI? And what are ones that uh, we might want to wait for a little bit more maturity or guidance or understanding of, does it make sense for us to go down, down that route? So I think there's some low hanging like operational questions, marketing use cases that you can go after, but some of these more higher sophisticated data analysis questions that might involve uh, a little bit more sensitive customer information. Those are the ones that we're holding off on and really trying to work with our customers to understand what is the right way before we even start feeding that into who knows what model and where that goes from there. Right. So from a preparers and or or a practitioner perspective, right, from a change management or learning and development, are there any conferences or industry um, events that we can attend to learn more about how to standardize data usage or how to standardize AI adoption? Yeah, that is a really great question. I, I am also kind of in the market looking for good like AI adoption type conferences. I think there those events are really starting to like sprout out sprout up this year. And the jury is still out on like how useful each of those are going to be. 
I don't know if I have a particular conference that I could recommend as part of this. It's more of, I think the things I'm looking for are just, uh, there's a ton of newsletters that are popping up that I try to follow, but I think okay. anything AI related, it feels like a little bit of whack-a-mole of like yeah. new newsletters come, new newsletters drop. Right. Uh, and it's really hard to find that central piece of information. I think that just kind of gets to the newness of, of AI. Right, right. But what about the data analytics uh, piece, right? Are there some industry standard events there that people can leverage? Yeah, yeah. I think some of the bigger trusted industry events, I mean, some of them are very vendor specific, of course, but um, some of the big ones that are very interesting just to understand where enterprise analytics is going and the things that they're thinking about is uh, Gartner Data Analytics Conference is a pretty pretty well trusted source because you can view a lot of vendors and understand where the industry is going. Uh, that fortunately or unfortunately just wrapped up this past week um, okay. and it happens uh, around the spring every year. <laughs> Okay, nice. That's a great recommendation for my listeners. Thanks again, Luke. This has been super helpful for me and for my listeners. I appreciate you coming and talking to me this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us today. Until next time, keep pursuing innovative strategies.